All right, so we got something to... Manual tube bender that we'll convert over to hydraulic. So we need to go up to our local steel supplier and pick up some material. We'll end up building this section of it. All right, so we got the bender together. Now we have the swag adapter coming in. I have to weld that. Basically, we I have to build a base, and uh, we have a inch and a half, 120 degree die coming in. Seems to be some pretty cool projects coming off of this. Definitely would love to know some ideas from you guys, what you'd like to see. So for now, we're going to turn this bundle of steel into the base. And we got some remnants for sample bins. We managed to find a pretty good deal on this cylinder from Harbor Freight. So we take the cylinder and the kit that we get from Swag and that'll that'll run our bender so that we ain't having to bolt the thing to the floor that way it can float put it on some wheels but it's a pretty nice system it's just air over hydraulic So there's the stand. We got to get the wheels on it. But we're going to throw a fresh coat of paint on it first. I just got the bender sitting up there. It's not really bolted in. We got a pin we have to install. Eighty degrees, or a little more, a hundred dollars more. So, so that's the die. Let's get the stand finished. So the stock unit would have this handle, and every time you pull it, it ratchets the die. Let's see, it's right here. You come back. So you get the degree wheel, so we can tell what angle we're bending. All right, then this is the pointer, so you can see what degree you're at. And that way it'll show me where we're actually at. All right, so we gotta take this, this bolt out. This has gotta come off. The handle for the hand crank's gotta come off. Cylinder mounts gonna go here and then on the other side over there we gotta put the the ram itself so so remember there's these two bronze bushings here that'll take the place of that that one bolt and the spacer So with that on, and those are lock nuts on the bottom of it, so I'm going to snug it, and then we do the same for the back, making it tight enough so that it can move, but not so tight that it, because there's not a, uh, there's not a tube in the middle of this to squeeze against. You're actually squeezing against the bracket. Now the cylinder itself, you got to remove this pin. You typically you would put the handle into 
we're going to knock this pin out so that we can put the handle on it that they provide you. That way you're not always using the handle. And it looks like there are some burrs on the very top of this. File this burr off. It's like where they poke through with the drill. Be with it. Just knock that burr off so that your handle goes on. You just line up the hole. Put the clamp on. All right, so when you put the clamp on, it's a very well made kit. You can tell they put a lot of time and engineering on this thing. They give you this tube that'll slide into the ram, and there's a collar here that'll go on to try to keep it from sagging. So, what you do is you'll just Position this. You might have to loosen up. You've already got it together. Might have to loosen some bolts up, but slide that in. It'll slide through. Your nut and washer's on the back side. All right, so let's tighten this thing up. So what we'll do is we'll close the valve. Let's put some air to it and see how it works. All right, so a couple of things you're going to find with these cylinders. They might be a little bit low on fluid when you get them. So when you first install these, make sure that that drain plug that's on the bottom, when you fill it, you're going to have to obviously rotate it up to pull the drain plug and get it stuffed back in there. They will not operate with this plug up. There's no oil flowing through the pump itself. So when you go into operation, you're gonna to have to put the lever that you would typically run as a jack. That's gotta go on the bottom side. Right. So once you roll that over, you can tighten this whole thing back up. Now they make a spring kit to pull these back, which we'll probably eventually add to this because it needs it. All right, so now with it rolled over, obviously make sure that your valve's closed. And with your valve closed, when you hit the air, it'll start cycling. Now it's gonna use quite a bit of air. That'll turn your manual bender into an automatic. Now this spring kit is going to be pretty valuable because getting this to come back by hand, well that's something that those springs will take care of for you. Alright, so we'll put, the, put the tube in. I'm just going to make my mark at the end of the die here. I'm going to put the seam in. We'll just snug this up. And we'll put our pin in for the die. The follower is already in. So we're going to just snug it up a little bit. Okay, so it's snug. Now we can come over here. We're going to set our thing. I think I might end up taking some, uh, like a yellow grease pencil or something, and go over these lines. 
So we're going to bend past a couple degrees. Alright, so when you set up the cylinder in this, the position of this air over unit is very critical. So when I had it horizontal, I could bend maybe 30 degrees. I had to rotate it just a little bit more to get the air over working because I could actually use the hand pump and I could make it go farther. So I knew they had enough oil in it. So I rotated it down just a little bit and it ended up working the rest of the way. I could pick up the extra 10 or 15 degrees. Right, so remember that once you, uh, once you buy this unit from Harbor Freight, you might have to add a little bit of oil. They're made to use vertically, not horizontally. So you have to play with it a little bit is not just bolt it up and go unless you just get lucky. We did go ahead and get the pullback spring from Swag. You take the pump off and you tie it into that back pin. But one thing we found in doing that, make sure that your valve is all the way closed because if it's not, without having the actual lever here to have it tied down to, you'll blow this pin straight out of it and you'll clean up a big oil mess. So first thing, we'll take the slack out. Compressor will come on eventually, so... reference for our angle and we'll bend. Pin. All right, so that was putting together a Woodward Fab bender. We built our own bit stand for it. If you got a way to weld, you can build that. It'll save you a hundred or so dollars. And showed you the install and putting on the swag kit, which was the hydraulic cylinder mount and that elastic spring. I personally didn't think I would need that spring at first, but after I had started the video and started the bends, realized real quick, you need the spring. Alright, so it was a pretty easy kit. I'll leave a link here so you can see me there where we're actually welding up that mount. That mount is much needed. If you don't want to bolt it to the floor, if you want to bolt the unit to the floor, well then just use the hand crank on it. It's not a big deal. So if you want to want help on one of these standards, we actually started a fab only channel. It's called 4x4 Fab Shop, and there's no space in Fab Shop if you type it in. So if you want help on these standards, I'll leave a link here for that. And if you want to help on the cylinder and the mount, I'll leave a link here as well. And always check out the other channel where we do just fab stuff. On Jeeping Mo, we try to use the, the fab stuff keep it around stuff we would do on a Jeep where we kind of nerd out a little bit more on the fab stuff on the 4x4 fab shop. So I'll see you in one of those other videos. This is Jeeping Mo.